We're thrown in a, in a world of darkness, in, a, in an environment of darkness. If you live in New York, Manhattan, 48th and Broadway, there are a lot of bright lights, but it's a lot of darkness. L.A., certainly bright lights. You know, Hollywood, bright, bright lights. The ultimate darkness. Paris, beautiful fashion, if that's what you call beautiful. Yeah. I mean, where's the fashion? You know, <laughs> you know taking your, your wonderful daughters and wives and presenting them on display, that's not really beautiful. That's actually sick, to be honest with you. <laughs> we have to understand that we cannot let ourselves get lost in the confusion. We have to create our home environment, which is sheltered and protected. Young children lack the understanding and discernment to make complicated choices, to do a, a b-roar, to get in, in a mess and pull out the good from the bad. We have to save our younger children, and sometimes we're even young. We're young also, we're like young children. We have to protect the whole, our wholesomeness as well. We're all Hashem's children. We have to protect the children from the confusion by creating an insulated home environment of holiness and of purity. We compare the Bet HaMikdash to a Jewish home. That means our home has to resemble that Bet HaMikdash. It has to resemble a nucleus of truth and purity and holiness. Mm -hmm. If we allow everything that exists on the outside to come into our sacred space, then we've lost that sacred space. We've profaned it and turned it into another, just a, a small model of, of what's outside. And you know one of the greatest destroyers of our home is what once upon a time was a TV screen. Then it became a plasma, and I'm not sure what's coming next, but the, the iPhone. When we bring the modern day culture and ideology, it's interesting, art. Art's a very interesting word, art. You know what art, you know what art means today? What is art? Art's a justificational term for every perverted thing I want to think yeah. and say and do. Yeah, I was going to say that exactly. It's just art. No. It's <laughs> art. You it's art. You're, you're, you're so primitive. You're so primitive. It's art. Actually, it's, 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 it's the opposite. You're so primitive in choosing that to be your art. That's the reality. You're a primitive. We can be so much more. We can be so much better. You know, there's so much potential light within that's, of course, being covered up by our own darkness and the darkness around us. So it's very important to create that insulated, protected, sacred, sacred fortress, our, our home, and, and our personal home within. We have to protect ourselves from what's out there if we want to stay on the right track and, and stay Hashem's. Right. So, so, again, very important. That's, that's one level. Another level of light in the darkness for the Jewish community is, and this of course applies in a broader perspective to all communities and all people that believe in God and want to go in Hashem's ways. It's Jew, non-Jew, we all share these general ideas as well. And that is to create a place where we can go to strengthen our batteries and to, and to reconnect with the, the light. And that for the Jewish people is a synagogue, a shul, where we gather to pray to God, to connect to God, to talk to God, to ask God for help, to draw down God, divine blessing from above. That synagogue, that place of prayer, is a refuge. It's a mini Bet HaMikdash in this time of exile. It is a refuge and a place of so much strength and power. It's not just, it's not just like a, an afterthought that the rabbis decreed that we all have to get together in a synagogue and shul to pray together. <laughs> that activity strengthens us. It protects us. It unites us. It, it has done more for us than we can imagine and ever dream of. That, that, that synagogue, a place of prayer, and, and uh, unbelievable, saving us, saving us till this very day. So you have to get out of your house sometimes because your house is only a very small refuge and go to this fortress. The fortress is the shul. The rabbis are there, the people that are connected. There's a lot of wealthy donors, people that need help, charity. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's unbelievable what happens in the Bet, in the bet Midrash, I'm sorry, in the, in the Bet Knesset. The charity, the learning, the, 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 the sharing and experience and the coming together as, as a one big family beyond the synagogue, because ultimately, if we only build synagogues, we see that that doesn't work to keep Jewish continuity. In the generation that came from Europe to America in the, 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 after the Holocaust, such a tragic physical event, there was a spiritual Holocaust when we got here. And you know, if you look at these very old, fancy shul synagogues, they built synagogues, but they were skeletons, empty of life and void of, unfortunately, real light. And they don't exist really anymore, those synagogues. You have to build a base medrash. You have to build a place of Torah learning. Ultimately, the greatest gift Hashem gives us is His Torah, which is His pure light and truth. 
If we don't have that and we, and we don't connect to that, when we're, then we're only Jewish by name. What's in the name? Nothing's in the name. Judaism and Jewish is not a, it's not a title. It has to be a verb. Jewish means I live a certain way. I act a certain way. I speak a certain way. I think a certain way. I affect the world in a certain way. And again, this extends beyond Jewish. Anyone who believes in God and God's truth is connected with this idea that when God gave the Torah on Mount Sinai to the world, He gave it to the entire world. Each person in his place, the way it applies to him. And so the, the Torah, God's instructions and God's wisdom and God's will manifest in this body of Torah, that's the ultimate fortress and protection and the ultimate light in darkness. It's such a light that that light's going to banish all of darkness. And that's, that's our real strength and the strength of the Jewish people till today, why we are a people. It's an unbelievable idea, by the way. It's discussed in the philosophical context as well is that what we have is so unique and so eternal that you can't kill, you can't kill it, you can't kill the spirit. Hitler himself said, we're like the conscience of the world. Mark Twain said, we're, we're a miracle. Shreki said it later, later but you know, we mm -hmm. are a miracle. But, but Mark, we're a walking miracle because the power that we connect with and the power that Hashem has endowed us with, it's undestroyable, unbreakable. It's the light of Hashem, the light of Torah, the light of truth, and that Nucleus is, 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 is our home base, and ultimately that nucleus is what's going to spread light and goodness to the whole world. We're Hashem's ambassadors. And anyone who chooses to join us becomes an ambassador of Hashem against, unfortunately, the wrong pursuits. The, 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 the big mouth, people that, that, that don't have what to say, that are just trying to make trouble and lead us astray. So we have to combat that, of course, with also we have to have a big mouth every once in a while, but with, with truth, with substance. Again, not in a way of fighting, in a way of, always, always, especially today, because even the bad guys are, are almost doing it half-mindedly. Half so we have to be more kind, more patient, and show the loving right hand of Hashem as opposed to the left punishing hand of Hashem. Today is a day of love and kindness, I think, this generation, and even to those that seem to be causing us problems. Truth is, this is not a chiddush of mine. You can, you can argue with me, I'll argue back, but we can go to Avraham himself. When Hashem tells Avraham, Avraham, I'm getting rid of Sodom and Sodom and Gomorrah, a place of perversion and wickedness, I'm going to destroy them. What does Avram say? Thank you, Hashem. Baruch Hashem. He didn't, he didn't say, thank you, Hashem, you're getting rid of the, 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 these people. He prayed and he argued. No, there's, maybe there's a way to save them. We can still salvage. We can, we can bring good. That's the way of, of, of Hashem. That's the way of Torah. There's always hope and there's always a potential to fix and save. Much better to fix and save, even if it's harder, than to just throw away. And that's the real story of why we're still here is because Hashem says when something is precious to me, I don't throw it away. I keep it. Patience. Work with it. We'll fix it. Hashem's not throwing this world away and He's not throwing us away. May we merit to fulfill some of these ideas. May we see a world around us brighter and brighter as we go about our efforts to increase light and goodness in the world. And may we see the promised world we're waiting for. This world that will be full of so much light that there'll be no more darkness no more evil, no more sickness, no more death, no more fighting. <coughs>